Hey guys, Warm Racer 08 here, <clears throat> and I'm back with uh, lesson two um, of our image slideshow with jQuery transition. Um, in this in this one, we're going to um, add this effect, this page white type effect. Um, so if you over here at developphp.com and the new uh, recently added video tutorials, if you haven't watched the first one, uh, lesson one of this. Well, we did just a simple fade in and fade out. I suggest you go back there because the, we laid the framework uh, and the groundwork for the code that we're going to build on. And so I'm not going to explain all of it, just the things that we've changed in, in this lesson. So, but again, in this lesson, we're just going to uh, do this uh, page wipe effect. And then in lesson three, we're going to add a randomizing tiling effect uh, that I showed you in the first video. So for this, let's... Uh, I used fireworks but you can use any uh, graphics program that you, you create things in. Uh, we're going to need an image that we're going to use as a, a fake mask. Um, basically we're going to set this image on top of our uh, pictures that we want in the slideshow and then animate its left property. So for this what you need is um, you've got to have a square block minus this wedge that's the same size as your pictures. So my pictures are 600 by 450, uh, 450 tall, 600 wide, and then I've added a wedge here that's additional 300 pixels. So the whole thing's width is 900 pixels. And so then you need to save this out as a transparent PNG so that this half here is transparent. Uh, I've included this in uh, in the source files, so you won't actually have to make it. But if you wanted to make a different, you know, a different style. Uh, fake mask you could do that so I just wanted to show you that here so let's jump in here to Dreamweaver and let's take a look at some of the changes we made in the first video this div here uh, the div of ID transition container we didn't use I had the code in there but I had it commented out because there wasn't nothing in it and, and we didn't utilize it so uh, just a few changes from the uh, first one for the HTML is uh, I've changed the the uh, JavaScript file to its own separate file for our custom code. It's still incorporating the jQuery library here on uh, line 26. And then uh, the CSS is going to be the same file from the original one. We're just going to add to it. So the only changes we've got to make to the HTML here are uh, on this div transition container. Uh, you definitely need to uncomment it. If you didn't have it in there, put it in. And we're going to add this image that we made in Fireworks to it. So this image has got a class that we're going to add to the CSS of mask and an ID of mask because we're going to animate this image and that's how we get it to do that page wipe effect. So let's take a look at the CSS here and what we've added to it. Uh, basically everything is the same. This should be here if you have the files from the first one, the transition container. Um, I had it in the other one, we just didn't utilize it. Um, for the photo wrapper ID we need to add this attribute here overflow is hidden because the mask uh, this fake mask image that we're using uh, is inside this transition container but it's also inside of this photo wrapper div and it's more than 600 pixels wide so we've got to hide the rest of it so that's what this overflow hidden is the buttons are the same uh, the image class is the same and then we're going to add our mask class which is going to have a position of absolute a top placement of zero pixels and here's the thing we've got to position the 600 wide square part of our fake mask to sit on top of the on the sit on top of our pictures so what we do is we give it a left uh, placement of negative 300 pixels or whatever the width of the added wedge is that you've added to the block in this in mine it's 300 pixels and then that'll sit it right on top of the pictures and it would just be black and then well, we will animate this left edge in our jQuery. So let's take a look at that. No new variables, everything's the same here. Uh, again, this is just a centering mechanism to center it in the browser window. So you may or may not want that. Here's where we've made uh, some changes here to the previous and next button uh, click handlers. Uh, and we've also made a change to our move to image function and we've added two additional functions an animate in and an animate out 
So let's take a look here uh, at our previous button, which is going to be, let's see, let's look at the old code in our fade. We had, we were, we were fading our image out here inside of, of our uh, previous, oh, I'm sorry, that was the next button, our previous button. We're doing the same thing, we're, we're fading it out whatever photo we were at in the index. So we've, we've removed some of that in this. Here, we're still going to find out if our buttons are locked or not, and then if, if we're going to do an animation, we're going to lock them up. Uh, and we're going to use the selected photo, we're going to de-increment it by one. And then if it's uh, if the selected photo is less than zero, uh, we're going to set it equal to the photo array minus one, which I explained this in the other video. Uh, this is just our looping mechanism so that uh, we never get at a higher or lower index than what's in the array. And so then we just are going to call our animate out function. And so let's take a look at animate out. Animate out is going to tell J jQuery is going to say find the element with the ID of mask and let's uh, set its CSS position to negative 300 pixels. And the reason why we do that is our animate in is actually going to animate the mask from left to right. But we've got to reset the mask every time so that it sit, is sitting back on top of our pictures. So that's what this does. When the animate in function moves the mask from left to right across our pictures, then the animate out will set it back on top of them. And then it also calls our move to image function, which has changed a little bit. We're going to use a for loop uh, inside this move to image uh, function right here and we've passed to it the selected photo which is the index of the photo in the array and so uh, for variable i is equal to zero i is less than the photo array dot length and then i plus plus so it's going to count us through it and we're going to tell J uh, jquery uh, the photo array variable which is all of our photos uh, at the index of i which is at any given time wherever we're at in the loop hide all these photos and then the same thing here except we're going to show the one that we've selected so when we pass this selected photo variable which is going to be at any time a number between 0 and 4 if there's 5 images in the array uh, to here so that the photo array at whatever index we're going to show that photo and we're going to lock up our buttons and then we're going to call the animate in function and pass it 1500 milliseconds which is going to be the rate at which the mask travels across our pictures so let's take a look at that. Uh, in the animate in function, we're telling jQuery, uh, it accepts a parameter of rate, which we've defined here as 1500 seconds. Uh, we're telling jQuery, jQuery, the element with the ID of mask, let's animate its CSS properties. And we're going to animate its left property to a positive 600 and pixels. And we're going to do that at a rate of uh, 1500 milliseconds. And then there's a an option here you you can with the with the standard jQuery library you have two options you can use a linear uh, type transition or you can use a swing the linear is going to be a constant rate uh, throughout the transition it's going to take 1500 milliseconds from start to finish at a constant rate or you could use swing which would look more like a curve it'll start slow and speed up and then slow back down uh, I like the linear function it looked a little more smooth. And so then we'll, we're going to use our callback function to unlock our buttons. And uh, the next button, same thing, uh, this code, we're going to increment our counter by one um, and loop it back around if it gets more than whatever the uh, index is. If, it, if the selected photo is at six, then uh, it's going to reset it back to zero or to yeah if it's how many ever pictures are in your array when it gets to the index above that that's what it's going to do so that we loop it back around there um, and that's pretty much it I mean we're starting at a negative 300 uh, our mask is with a left position of negative 300 so when we animate it we got to animate it 600 pixels so that the 300 part of the wedge is what comes across our uh, photos and that's how we get the effect here of the page white and then our buttons are still locked out we can't I'm double clicking 
Nothing's happening while the transmission is going on. So I hope you guys like this one. Uh, I'll be back in a little while with uh, our third lesson, which will be the randomizing tiled blocks, which is a little bit more complex. We're going to use a randomize, randomizing loop and uh, um, feature there to uh, randomize the blocks as they tile in and tile out. So I'll catch you guys next time.